Greetings, mathematicians. Let's take a look at today. Um, we're going to be doing this live a little bit later, but I'm also going to record it in case anybody needs this. The lesson is properties and strategies. I'm on 20L and 20R. If you need to pause and update your table of contents, otherwise, stick with me. All right. As per usual, I have a bunch of this framed out. Pause as needed, but I do want to make sure I have the, those page numbers in 20L and 20R. I'll give you a, a broad overview. If you're going to screenshot. All right, let's jump into this. Let's go ahead and get all the normal the usual parts of our notes together. We've got a title, we've got a date, we have an objective. The title of this lesson is Properties and Strategies. So essentially we have two tips that we're gonna go through today. Our objective, I will use properties and strategies to compute problems mentally. All right, so let's break out a few of those things. So the words that stand out to me are compute, that is our verb, that is our action. So for a computer, we're going to solve some problems. This could be like a calculator or a computer. Um, when we're talking mentally, we're talking about how to solve problems in your brain mentally. All right, one more time with the objective, read it with me. I will use properties and strategies to compute problems mentally. All right, and properties, I'm certain your fourth grade teacher talked to you about properties of addition, subtraction, and multiplication. As far as strategies, this is just methods. All right, and let's look at our first vocab term of strategy. And to help illustrate strategy, there, there used to be this video game I played when I was a kid, it was called Tetris and it had these blocks that would fall from the top of the screen on my Game Boy and they'd fall to the bottom. And as the game got harder, the, they would fall quicker and the music would speed up. And the thing that we were always looking for was like, how do you fit pieces together evenly and compatibly? So like another piece would be falling and it would look like this. And it was like, I always try to fit it into the spot where it would kind of connect together easily. Or if I was really lucky, I would get one of these that was like a, another block that looked just like it. And I could fit it in right into place. Um, so either one of these would fit compatibly with that corner. And that's something that we want to look at today is a thing called compatible numbers. Can you say it with me, compatible numbers? Um, when we talk about compatible, we, we want to think about fit together. And typically with compatible numbers to do this mentally, we want to think of numbers that go together to make 100. So yesterday when we talked about the break apart model, um, we could talk about 100. We could break that into what, 25 and 75 pretty easily. So if I had a math problem that had 25 and 75, I could slam them together to get 100 fairly quickly. Uh, another way to make 100 is 20 or 50 and 50. I could also make 100 easily by what, 10 and 90. So this skill, this strategy of compatible numbers is really a skill of observation one where we're really looking at the numbers to see how do they fit together? Just like in Tetris, how do you make them go together? All right, the other piece of vocab we're gonna talk about today is properties, say it with me, properties. All right, since we are working with addition, these are all properties of addition. Um, I have left that out of the notes because it takes a long time to write it, but you can tell from the operation in my sample that this is addition. Now the the adjective describing these properties of addition would be, say it with me, commutative. 
associative, distributive. All right, and in the word commute or commutative, we wanna think about commute, like your parents going to work, they can drive, they can move around. So if we look at this sample, I'll zoom in, we look at commutative, look at half of the problem, A plus B. This could be any number, this could be two plus five. What is two plus five? Seven. So on the other side of this, this expression or this equation, I could reverse the order just like we talked about yesterday and it would still be true. So instead of two plus five, I'm gonna say five plus two. All right, let's cover it up. Does five plus two still equal seven? Yes. So when we talk about the commutative property, sometimes it helps us to move the numbers around so we can fit things compatibly together. All right, the other property we're gonna look at is associative. Now, the key word in here is associate, which means group. Like I associate myself with uh, intellectuals like Mr. Hanacek and Ms. Wang and Ms. Shamas. So it's who you group together. And when we're talking about math, we're talking about parentheses with groups. So what's inside those parentheses? So again, let's cover half of the equation. A plus B equals C. So let's put in some samples. Let's use the same A and B. Let's do two plus five plus three. So let's group them together. Two plus five is seven plus three is, that's right, 10. Let's reorganize them and fit compatibly. Oh, you know what, let's, let's make this, uh, let's come up with a better version of this. How about we go with, um, two plus five plus eight. There we go. So two plus five plus eight, two plus five is seven plus eight is, that's right, 15. Let's reorganize them to group our compatible numbers together. Which three of these fit together to make a zero? number, a number that ends in zero. And that's really where that compatible idea comes into play. Can I reorganize them? Of course I can. Let me keep A and let's, let's reorganize this to five plus two plus eight, because real easily eight and two fit together to make 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. So the reorganization will help us mentally compute. And that's where the associative property is most useful. All right. Next one, distributive property. Um, the key term here is distribute. And you could think about the UPS driver or the Amazon driver uh, sending out packages to people distributing goods like Santa Claus. Um, this one is all about how you send out information. So let's look at half of the equation, A times B plus C. This is saying that we have a number. Let's go with um, two times three plus seven. So I could add these up. Let's do three plus seven, since they're in the parentheses, you get 10. Two times 10 is 20. Another way to write this is, let's individually do the multi multiplication, two times three. Two times three inside the parentheses plus two times seven. Inside the parentheses, I'm running out of space, I'm running out of my crease, kind of hard to see. So. You had mentioned three plus seven is 10. Two times 10 is 20. Another way to do this, two times three is six. Two times seven is 
14, we add them up. So if you find numbers being multiplied by the same number, you could reorganize them and distribute them. So either one of these works. All right. I'll zoom out if you need to take a quick photo or screenshot. All right. Let's take a look at our strategy of compatible numbers. In this quick example, we have three steps. Number one, we need to ask ourselves a question. Which pieces fit together compatibly? Or which ones go together easily? Let's scan our list of add-ends. 30,000, 20,000, 80,000, 49,000, 70,000. Which two go together? And I'm just gonna look at the thousands place. Which two to go together to make a zeroed number? Well, I know 80 and 20 go together, they're compatible. So 80 and 20 will get 100,000, okay? What other, do any others go together compatibly? Let's see, 70,000, 49,000, or 30,000. I'm gonna pull these two out. What do I get? 70 and 30 makes 100,000. So I have 200,000. Which one's left over? All right, so now I have a really easy equation. I just go 100,000, whoops. plus 100,000 plus my leftover piece, my remaining piece. So I pull out, the, pull out and add, and then add my remaining piece, which is 49,000. I have a very easy problem. Let's pull them down. 100 plus 100 is 200. And I'm out of space, so I'll just put it down here. The answer is 249,000. So pretty easy strategy, but again, this one is all about observing and looking for those compatible pieces. All right, let's scroll down to examples of our properties. Commutative, pretty, pretty simple problem right here. Let's look at half of the problem. problem. 26,184 plus 1,546. The other side of the problem, I see this number is repeated and missing the other add end. What is it? This is almost like a matching puzzle when you see problems like this using the commutative property of addition. All right, associative. Again, it was associate and let's reach back to unit one. We have seven tenths, three fourths, one quarter. Do they all have like denominators? No, however, these two do have like denominators. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rewrite this problem and I'm gonna pull this one out. So I'm gonna do seven over 10. I'm going to leave it on its own. Then I'm going to associate the two with like denominators to make my life a little bit easier. So I've pulled them together. Three quarters and one quarter makes four fourths. Or what's four fourths equal to? One whole. And then I just have a remaining seven tenths. So my answer is Let's write it over here. It would be one and seven tenths. All right. Distributive. I have two parts. In our last example, we started distributing one number. Which number is repeated in these two multiplication problems? Look to the first digit. Do they match? No. Second digit, do they match? Yes. 
So I can simply rewrite this as nine times 25 plus 75. What do you notice about 25 and 75? What do they easily create? Do they fit together compatibly? Of course. 25 plus 75 is 100. Bring it down, nine times 100. My answer simply is 900. All right, my friends, you will have Think Central Unit 2, Lesson 7, PMT homework loaded into Think Central. Have a great day.